Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to Okali Unreported episode Anne Hargis. This is the Anne Hargis special. Coming in here in studio, Anne, how are you today? I'm good, Ryan. Thanks. Of, that is great to hear. That is <laughs> awesome to hear. We're, we're glad to have you. We're great because you're in studio with us today. Um, you know, how has life been for you lately? Obviously, uh, back in October, uh, your husband announced his retirement right. um, or announced his plans to retire. Today, as we film this right now, they're picking a new president. What's, all, what's this been like for you? Well, of course, we've known this was coming for a long time because he actually told the regents in December a year ago mm -hmm. that he was going to announce in October. So they had 10 months to wait until the announcement knowing it was coming. Yeah. So they've had a long time to prepare and be organized. And I think it was Burns' hope to make the transition as smooth as possible. And so we've anticipated this. I think it's a very exciting day to see the direction mm -hmm. that OSU will be going and I think it's very very bright I think it is too and you know yeah. when you when you look at it too it's it's so interesting to see the leadership changes that are at the top you know it's it's Mike Holder's leaving it's um the provost is leaving it's your husband's leaving you're leaving it's a clean slate it's a clean slate start over and celebrate yeah Just soar are you excited yeah. to see this new leadership come into fruition all very. at once very mm-hmm what, what do you yeah. expect from them? Um, I guess, what are your, you know, hopes and wishes from the next president? And I guess uh, first cowboy or cowgirl or cowgirl or cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> the first cowboy or cowgirl. Uh, all I can say is I feel like we're on a trajectory mm -hmm. and I think it's going to be even bigger and brighter and more wonderful. I think the stage is set. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited about the future. Yeah, exactly. And okay, yeah. obligatory journalism question. I have to ask, who's the next president going to be <laughs> as it stands right now? You know, I don't know. We have not been part of the process one little bit. Really? They have not shared one thing. The only thing we know is gossip. Mm -hmm. When you look at the new leaders that are stepping in, what are sort of your expectation levels for them? And what do you want to see from these new leaders that are coming in, especially your husband and your position? I want them to have the time of their lives and make a huge difference for the school. Mm -hmm. And how they do that specifically, I don't care, because I think we all have different strengths, and I think the new leadership will bring brand new strengths to this university. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be refreshing, and I'm very mm -hmm. hopeful yeah. that it'll be great. Mm -hmm. And and you know what, uh, with new leadership coming in, means that uh, your leadership is is heading out, mm -hmm. at least you know from an official standpoint. In what ways do you plan on staying involved with OSU in the future? Well, first of all, I don't call this a retirement. Mm -hmm. You know that. I call it graduation. Graduation. We are graduating. <laughs> We've had a great education. We've been exposed to so many wonderful things that we never dreamed possible. Mm -hmm. And now it's time for us to graduate. We yeah. know how you feel when you graduate. You're very hopeful. You're a little, little confused, a little anxious, mm -hmm. uh, but looking forward to the next step and i do hope to be involved i hope to always wear orange i hope that that's just part of who i am now and uh i will remain part of the pet therapy program that is so, amazing yeah yeah oh i'm excited about that yeah yeah you know what and that's that's i think what what people love about you and burns is that is that you you both seemed like you were uh, you know, sewn within the fabric of this university, right? Um, so that's great that, to see that you guys are still going to stay involved um, with OSU. Um, and I'm, g I'm guessing you'll be back for the uh, hundredth, sort of hundred first homecoming next year. Probably. Uh -huh. Probably. I haven't thought that far, but uh, <laughs> just to know that this is home and this is family. Yeah. And hopefully, I don't think ne either Burns nor I want to be any any sort of uh, negative pull against the next leadership. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is add to whatever their mission is Yeah, and get out of the way. I mean, we don't plan to be knocking on the door of the president's office saying, can I have a cup of coffee? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, that, yeah. that's a, it's a very nice office too. You know, there was a lot of perks to this job, uh, you know, from what Burns has told me. What has been the best like thing that you've been able to experience at this job? What was the best perk of the job of being the first oh, a cowgirl? Perk, a yes. perk, of course, has to be parking. Oh, when really? you think about it, uh -huh. yeah, because that's what we hear the most. Parking is at a premium, that and so I call it princess parking. 
because I <laughs> park wherever I want to, and that's going to take some adjustment. Mm -hmm. I bet. Yeah. Um, Burns told me a story one time about how he went to the Colvin, okay, and he was he forgot his ID, and he walked in there, and he didn't want to do the whole "Do you know who I am?" thing. Have you ever been, you know, gotten a ticket or anything like that? And and they, you know, pulled you over, and you're like, and they were like, "Oh no, never mind." <laughs> A lot of times, <laughs> really? as a matter of fact, well, and here's a fun story to me. Uh, I love to be incognito. Mm. I love it when people have no idea who I am. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I drive my little orange golf cart mm -hmm. around and I love to pick up students. Basically, that's what it's for. But I found myself picking up elderly people from the parking lot to take them to events in uh -huh. Gallagher Iba. So one of the first times I did, an elderly couple was riding in the golf cart. And I took him to the front door, and he turned to me as they got out of the cart, and he said, now, will you be here when the game's over? And I said, well, I'm really not sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> he thought I was really a taxi service yeah. doing it for free. Because they have those things that are around. Like they people do. Will go on the golf They're my competition. Exactly. Those are my competition. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know about them. They might be great at what they do, but Ann Hargis, I feel like, is the best golf cart driver on this campus. <laughs> well, you know what else? I figured last, it was like two or three days ago, mm -hmm. someone borrowed my car. Mm -hmm. And when they returned it, she said, this is so much fun. I've never had so much fun. I thought, well, maybe I didn't know <laughs> this, the card that's fun, yeah. you know, because I have fun in it. But just to have a total stranger tell me that, I go, yeah, that is really a kick. I bet. It is so much fun. Mm -hmm. And just the experiences you get from driving that around. How hard is it going to be to give it up? I'm not going to give it up. I'm going to give it to the university. Uh huh. So it will... Clementine belongs on this campus That's right. in some way. <laughs> so I'm not sure, you mm -hmm. know, the next president may not want a cart. Mm -hmm. So it will be donated to the university at the president's discretion. Right, exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and um, I, I think people just, you and Clementine just seem synonymous with each other, right? You know, <laughs> well, I don't know, because I'd have to fight her. If my son came up for a football <laughs> game and uh, my husband. I mean, everybody wants to drive her. Sure. Yeah. So I think we're taking her to the baseball game tonight. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and what have going to some of these events been like for you? Obviously, uh, you told me you're uh, fully vaccinated now. Um, yeah. And I, I believe Burns told me he is as well. Are you more comfortable with going to these events and, and finally, you know, being able to enjoy this sort of, I'm not going to call it a retirement tour. I'm going to call it a graduation tour. Graduation. Mm -hmm. I will say that we're still very, very cautious. We still wear our mask. And I've not been anywhere that's full capacity mm -hmm. yet. Uh, we went to a performance at the McKnight Center last night. Mm -hmm. And it's maybe a quarter full. I'm not even sure it's that many people. Yeah. But socially distanced, uh, you walk in, you go straight to your seat. There's no gathering mm -hmm. in the beginning, and there's really no gathering afterwards. You, so you go in, you see the performance, and you leave. And the group performing was called the Pink Martini. Nice. And she came back on stage. She said, we're really not used to this kind of an encore. You know, there was no noise. Yeah. I mean, people were clapping, but there's no, they're not used to that in uh -huh. crowds. But that was their first performance public performance That's awesome. indoors she said yeah and probably, yeah yeah i was gonna say you know a lot there's a lot of people that have probably waited you know a whole year to to go to some of these things and some of these events maybe even more um yeah and it's just such a such a weird year it's a, such a it it's is. a shame i think because you and burns this was the last year for you guys isn't you know? that interesting yeah well i think we've been in training for graduation sure when you think about it because when you have no homecoming mm -hmm. And you have no graduation and you have none of the gatherings mm -hmm. that are so meaningful. Right. Uh, and you're physically going through those times mm -hmm. and you know, well, this is when we normally have this event and there's no event. It's like you're retired. Yeah. It's like we've already been there. We've already done it. This so, might be a perfect training wheels thing for you then. I think it is. Think about it. Mm -hmm. We've been very, very quiet this year. I, yeah, it seems like it, you yeah. know, and um, so when you look at what comes next, um, what is coming next? Where where will Who you knows? go? Who knows? Oh, we kept our home in Oklahoma City. Perfect. Mm -hmm. We've had it since we've been here. Mm -hmm. And an interesting sideline is in the 13 years that we've been here, of course, we've traded in cars and had new cars. But every car we own has three 
buttons on it to program for garage doors. Mm -hmm. Those are all to our home in Oklahoma City. Oh. Everything we do in Stillwater are those remote controls. Mm -hmm. So we've got four or five, you know, in the side of our car, two or three up in the visor. Yeah. This one opens that gate. This one opens that car. This one opens that garage door. That's a neat little So, car. well, so we've always known that that's, we're just borrowing this position. Mm -hmm. And we've had a wonderful, wonderful experience, but we've always known it wasn't permanent. Mm -hmm. That's so true. You know, yeah. it, you know, it, it, it's, I feel like the terms for uh, some of these university presidents, it's, it's just an unknown thing to a lot of people. People don't really know the world of uh, the, the life of a university president, you know? And did you ever, ever imagine when you were on your first date with Burns, okay, <laughs> that you would ever be first cowgirl to Burns's OSU presidency? Of course not. Yeah. It wasn't on our radar anywhere. But I will tell you, interestingly enough, Burns and I met because of OSU. Really? Yes. I was raised in Dallas and went to the Dallas Public Schools. Mm -hmm. And then I went to my public university, which was in Austin. And after I graduated, I went to work in Houston. Mm -hmm. So I was living in Houston. And Burns moved to Houston that particular summer, the same first summer that I was there. And he came to my apartment complex to see an OSU buddy who lived in my apartment complex. And so my roommate at the time mm -hmm. came upstairs and she said, there's some fresh meat down by the pool. And so she said, one's playing the guitar. I thought, well, that sounds good. So I put on, I, I had just gone upstairs to get ready for a date that mm -hmm. I had that night. And so I'd wash my hair, my hair was wet. So I threw a towel on my head and then I threw on an orange muumuu. Now, do you even know what a muumuu is? I do not. It hangs from the shoulder. It's uh -huh. Hawaiian and it just hangs from the shoulder out. It's like a house coat or sure. a very, very unrevealing of anything. So I uh, had on no makeup, but I just went down to hear this guy play the guitar. Mm -hmm. So a couple of weeks later, Burns called Tom Geis is his name. He was actually raised in Stillwater. He called Tom and he said, I'd like to ask that Ann girl out, but tell me just how large is she? Because <laughs> he had no idea. He said, you know, I just didn't want a forklift to get her in the car <laughs> for our first date. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. So anyway, fast forward 50 years later in 2019, we mm -hmm. were celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary. And uh, so we decided to retrace our steps from where we first met, our first date, our first the chapel where we were married and things mm -hmm. that we did that, we knew each other for a year before we got married. So I got online and I ordered an orange mumu and a head towel and I saw I reenacted the way we met. That's incredible. Is that fun? 50 years later, like you got, you just did yeah. that. That we is. We found my apartment complex and it's, of course it's all boarded up yeah. and locked now because it's <laughs> not in a safe area sure. anymore. But yeah, we kind of stood outside the pool mm -hmm. and snapped pictures. Did he did he uh, bring his guitar up? Well, I was surprising him. So what I did was uh. get a blow up guitar that I packed in my luggage. <laughs> so I blew it up for him to use. Oh my gosh, you <laughs> you are sentimental as heck, aren't you? Oh yes. Oh yeah. Oh very much. It sounds like it, you know. Yeah. So when you're progressing through this, right, and and he's going through his career in banking, right. Um, when was it? I, I guess it was 2007 when he became OSU president. You know president. so much. I, yes. See, I'm a wealth of, of useless knowledge. <laughs> no, 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 this is very useful to me. It is. It is yeah. Exactly. It, it's, it is for, um, it, this is a great target audience right here. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in 2007, Burns is named president. What are you thinking? Like, are you like, wow, I'm going to, I guess you could tell me. Go ahead. Well, it was when he first started talking about it, I said, why rock the boat? I mean, we had reached a point in our lives where everything was very comfortable. Mm -hmm. We were new grandparents. I loved being with the grandchildren. I loved my free time. I played a lot of golf. I did whatever Ann wanted to do. Yeah. And Burns was comfortable in his profession. So the closer we got to the possibility and the more people we heard said they were excited about the possibility the more we started thinking about it mm -hmm. and the more excited I got because I knew Burns would do a terrific job yeah and I knew that it would be a great experience for him when you look at the the daily life of a first cowgirl at OSU what does that look like you know um, we'll talk pre-COVID too 
Okay, pre-COVID, I would say you get up and you spippy up, you get dressed, and out the door you go and you never know what's gonna happen next. Wow. And you are just on your feet, running, and it's the most exhilarating thing I've ever experienced. So where else can you be at a rodeo one minute, at yeah. an opera another minute, at a football game, and it's all in the same town, and it's all 15 minutes away. Yeah. It is the greatest opportunity imaginable. In this small town, too. Uh -huh. I always tell people, like, we if a new writer comes in, I'm like, there's 10 billion stories in this town, and, it, and all within a super short radius. Well, look, last night we had a baseball game, mm -hmm. and we had the pink uh, martini yeah. at the Midnight Center. Exactly. It, it, there's something going on, and this is during sort of COVID. Exactly. It's the quiet time. Mm-hmm. So other times it's like there are lectures on campus, there are guest speakers, mm -hmm. there's the committees meeting and there are people having all kinds of activities all the time. Exactly. And that's why, I mean, I think that's what makes this place so special. And that's why yeah. a lot of people know each other in this community. That's why a lot of people um, have really honed in on, on you and Burns uh, as, as being sort of the leaders during some of these times, you know? Um, and, you know, especially during COVID and stuff like that, people were looking to you guys as, as obvious leaders, obvious figureheads. And um, was it hard to, to nav try to navigate uh, the university through some of the more difficult times? We'll talk, we're talking, you know, the homecoming crash. We're talking oh, COVID man. and other stuff like that. Well, let's talk about COVID yeah. in that, you know, there were numerous Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. And I overheard Burns explain one time mm -hmm. that part of the decision making was when you have the student's safety at heart, it makes your decisions pretty easy. Yeah. So there wasn't a lot of guessing. There was a lot of conviction for safety. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate the way the decisions were made and the way the faculty, staff, and students bought into everything right. and cooperated. I mean, we really had a pretty smooth shutdown. I'd say so. Yeah. I was just, I was very, very impressed with that. Mm -hmm. So, and then the other thing that, I think got us through a lot of the tragedies or some of the beautiful stories that came out mm -hmm. of people helping people. Uh, yeah. You know, people bringing food to the workers and people helping each other. And some of the students that I know who came to the rescue of some of the injured victims yeah. initially, you know, before EMSA even got there. Exactly. There were students. Pistol Pete saved a student. That's right. That was one of my special favorite stories. And the epilogue to that story is because the young boy who, his name's Alan, mm -hmm. the young boy who was injured was rescued by Pistol Pete, his hero. Yeah. And we got in touch with that particular student who played Pistol Pete, mm -hmm. who went to see him. And he didn't want any recognition. Sure. But as a result of that, the mother of the young boy and the mother of Pistol Pete mm -hmm. have become very good friends. Really? Uh -huh. That is outstanding. Those are just little stories that you're privileged to be able to yeah. learn as you go along. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, uh, I, I, like I said, like with the way this community is set up, I feel like that's what makes this place special. Is it because is. you can have those sort of weird connections. If you see someone in the airport with an OSU sweatshirt on. Immediately. 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 Like it's second nature. They'll do this or something uh -huh. like that, uh -huh. you know? And I guess other schools is the same way. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But an experience we had, we were in the airport in Dubai. Yeah, wow. Not to name not places, uh -huh. but we've had some fantastic trips. Sure. It's three o'clock in the morning, Dubai time. Uh -huh. And it is like international crossroads of the world. And you see people in their native dresses, mm -hmm. all kinds of native dresses. So we're slicking our luggage, you know, across the, the traffic going every which way. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden we hear under his breath, we hear, go pokes. It's just three o'clock in the morning oh in Dubai. Oh my gosh. And of course it was an OSU grad mm -hmm. who was working in Dubai on his way back to the United States. Wow. So I always say, carry carry your logo with pride. Exactly. Always. Mm -hmm. Carry it with pride, you know, and you know who you represent it because there are going to be stories like that everywhere. I've seen yeah. that so many airports across the country. Uh -huh. Denver, Newark, New Jersey. I mean, all these different places, you'll see it everywhere. Yeah, um, great. What, what has been some of your, like, you know, We'll, we'll get past some of the more tragic moments at OSU. Let's go with the happy moments, okay? What has been your favorite things to see grow at this school, whether it's buildings, whether it's, you know, just individuals? 
um, or students. What has been your favorite thing of to see? Of course, it's always the students. Mm-hmm. The whole thing is about the students. Right. And that has been the reward to see. One of my favorite is Julia Benbrook, mm. who we met as maybe a 10 year old child in Woodward at one of the caravans. Yeah. And I remember it well because this was so long ago that texting was brand new. Oh, gosh. And she showed Burns how to text on his phone. So I remember a 10-year-old girl showing him that. So she ended up coming to OSU where she was an outstanding, Mm -hmm. outstanding uh, student and top everything. And now she's in broadcast. Mm -hmm. And she was working with OSU for a long time. But now she's in the Washington Bureau. Mm. So just to watch her develop and blossom and be so proud of her. She's just one. Yeah. But all students like that. Mm-hmm. It's so fun to see, too. It is, yeah. it is so rewarding. Yeah. And uh, I've got a bazillion stories. I'm sure you students. do. Yeah. I'm sure you got a billion stories about everything, honestly. You I know? do. And that's, I just, do. That's, that's the nature of your position and, and just the way you just are. Just the yeah. gift. Mm-hmm. The gift to be exposed. Okay, here's one of my favorite. Let's hear it. Uh Years ago, we Burns and I were in Nashville mm-hmm. to see three very prominent, uh, successful OSU grads who mm-hmm. were in the country music business. Right. So we had about half an hour or so to spare before that meeting, mm-hmm. and we were just on the main street of Nashville. A car came by. We were standing on the corner, and the car came by, and the window rolled down, and this boy said, Is that Mrs. Hargis? And I thought, We're in Nashville on a Friday yeah. at 11 o'clock. And I thought, who in the world was that? And he came around the block a second time. Mm-hmm. And he said, uh, I'm here looking for a summer internship. And he was there with his mom. And so I said, well, keep driving. And we called the university yeah. uh, to get his phone number. I had his cell phone number. So we met with these three prominent people. Mm-hmm. And one was Tim Dubois, who's yeah. very well known. And he just happened to have had a cancellation at 2 o'clock. So I called Max, Mm -hmm. is the student's name, and I said, Max, get to Tim's office at 2 o'clock. He will see you. So when Max was meeting with Tim, Mm -hmm. his mother and I were out in the lobby, and his mother said, you know, they were from Kansas City. Right. His mother said Max could have gone to any school. He wanted to go either to Belmont in Nashville or OSU because he wanted to go into the business end of country and western music. Mm -hmm. So she said when he came to OSU and we were going through the alumni center, he saw the plaques of all the outstanding uh, alums. And he saw this one name. He said, Mom, this is what I want to do. I want to do what this guy does. It was Tim Dubois. Wow. He got an internship with Tim. He has graduated. He is now working in Nashville doing his life's ambition. Oh, my God. And all because the chance meeting around the corner. Yeah. I mean, how do two worlds come together like that? That is utterly outstanding. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Gosh, that's like one of the biggest coincidences that you could ever have. Yeah. My yeah. And those goodness. are just kind of like, aren't we lucky? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the way, like, just everything just intertwines so well here. Yeah. Uh, that is you got awesome. It. Yeah. Um, you know, when you look at uh, some of the leadership here too. Um, I, I remember back in um, a couple of years back when, when I first got here, I was thinking, man, the big three at this school really is it's, it's Burns, it's um, T. Boone Pickens and it's Mike Gundy, right? Uh-huh. Th- that was sort of the three people that people looked at when they thought uh-huh. of OSU, when they think of OSU. Yeah. I know how much Burns talks about T. Boone Pickens and his Booneisms. Yes. Do you yes. have a favorite one? Oh, my gosh, yes. Oh, yes. It just comes to mind. I've got a million of them. You know, Uh they keep them at the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. Yes. They have them. Mm -hmm. But one of my favorite is Don't Pay the Monkey, You'll Get a Better Show. I love that one. I love that. Uh Yeah. We actually, that's a saying we say all the time. Oh, is it really? Literally all the time. I actually hear it almost once every day. (laughs) (laughs) That particular one? That one. How funny. That one. Um, Uh, What's your favorite? I like that one, and I like the one that, he, that Burns had told me um, when he was talking about the next president and what he wanted from them. He said that everybody is always, you know, you, you in business or in decision making, you have to be a decision maker, right? In oh, um, yeah. anything, it's yeah. you can't be aim, 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 Ready, aim, aim, aim. aim. Uh-huh. Someone's got to take the shot. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing. I'm probably butchering it. No, it's good. I get it. Exactly. I get it. You know, yeah. and, and that has got to be the best one. So what impact did, did Boone have on, on your guys' life? Well, he was probably one of the uh, most interesting. I mean, he was a legend. Mm-hmm. To be in the presence of a legend, he didn't think of himself as a legend. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, he would walk up to somebody, anybody, and say, hi, Boone Pickens. Yeah. So I want to tell you another Booneism that Let's hear it. Burns has probably told you. Boone said his dad used to tell him there are three reason, reasons why we can't do something. Mm -hmm. And Boone said, well, yeah, Dad, what are they? He said, well, the first money. And Boone goes, okay, where are the other two? And his dad said, they don't matter. <laughs> that is so great. Yeah. That is so That's great. That's another Booneism. Mm -hmm. But he was quite uh, interesting, fascinating, always kept you on your toes. Yeah. Yeah. He could jump from subject to subject to... He was very generous, mm -hmm. and I think we experienced more things through him and his ability to give back to this university than we will ever, ever be able to repay. Yeah. You know, and, and that like that's what we loved about it is that um, there was always uh, what I loved initially about the school was that it felt like, you know, the community aspect of things. We've talked about that a million times on this now, but even at the top, you know, when you see how much how intertwined like the athletics here are with the business side of things the academic side of things it just was so cool um and, and that's why it's so exciting to see the um the new leadership come in to see if they can continue sort of that legacy that you guys had built here i think it will attract that kind of person yeah and i think it i mean just the pool of people who applied mm -hmm. i mean i understand i don't know 30 40 people wow apply that that speaks volumes for mm -hmm. people who want to be part of this magic sure mm -hmm. yeah and so i think we got a very good pool of candidates and i think that's another reason why i'm very excited about it i i think you should be i, yeah. I think we the the university should be or you know maybe um i don't, I don't know if you've seen any of the candidates but based on what you've seen based on what you know okay based on stuff you've heard should osu be excited about this next president oh definitely mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think it gets back to students as well, because I remember one time talking with Kirk Butke, mm -hmm. uh, the women's basketball coach who tragically died in right. a plane accident. But he was trying to recruit a student for women's basketball. Right. And it was between another school and this school. And uh, I said, you know, Kirk, I just hope she comes here. I really do. He said, well, I'll tell you what, if she doesn't, she's not one of us. In other words, I think we embrace our own kind mm -hmm. and the people who get the OSU magic, whatever yeah. the feeling is, perpetuate that magic. It mm -hmm. was here years ago and it's still the same. It is. So I think the leadership will be the same way. They will have that entity and I can't, I wish I could bottle it, you exactly. know, but they will have that. Mm -hmm. It, it is something that you cannot quantify, but is there right. something weird about this university that in a good way, in yeah. a, a good weird, good uh, weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. let, me, let me ask you this. Okay. Yeah. This is super off topic, but okay. I, I know you'll love talking about it. Rumor has it you're into yoga. Oh, yes. Yeah. Rumor has it you, you, you might even instruct yoga. Uh, well, I'm certified. I've oh not had gosh. time to instruct. Tell us. But well, I will tell you yoga to me mm -hmm. fills me up and it is something that involves physical, mental, emotional, it's the whole package. Mm -hmm. And so I tell, especially Burns, I tell people, don't think of what you look like on the outside. Yeah. Think about what's going on inside your body. Mm -hmm. And if you approach it from that aspect, if you just bend over a little bit, you are massaging your internal organs. It doesn't matter if you touch your toes or not. It yeah. just matters that you are using your own body to do something beneficial for you. And I'll tell you just a cute little side mm -hmm. that uh, remember when we had the big ice storm, everybody was kind of homebound oh, of forever. Mm -hmm. We started doing yoga. There's mm -hmm. a wonderful YouTube channel, which I'll give her a plug. She doesn't need it. Yoga with Adrian. Uh -huh. She has 9 million followers. Oh, my. Oh, wow. Well, we're one, but. Uh, we started doing yoga with my son, now my daughter, Burns and I do yoga every morning at seven oh my on gosh. FaceTime because we're in <laughs> three different cities. Yeah. And it's been really fun for the family to do mm -hmm. it together. That is so cool. Yeah. So that has brought, yoga might be bringing the Hargis family together. Might be. Just even closer. Yeah. Uh -huh. What That's is the true. Hargis family like? What is it like? Yeah. What, what, what is the family dynamic like? I don't, I don't think people know enough about your, uh, the, the Hargis kids. Well, uh, son, Matt, daughter, Kate, mm -hmm. and married and three grandchildren. And, uh, it's, it's good. They, mm -hmm. Matt lives in Oklahoma city. Kate lives in Norman. Oh, wow. 
Kate and her husband have an organic, well, natural uh, food store in so cool. a little one, a little grocery store called The Earth. Mm. And they were there in the 60s, not our, the, the Earth was there in yeah. the 60s, but now major chains have come into Norman mm -hmm. and given them a lot of competition, but they still have a wonderful following mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's a precious place. It's like an old 1930s home. You know, the neighborhood grocery store that was yeah. right next to houses. Mm -hmm. It's it's one of those That's on so Flood cool. Street. It's very cool. Uh -huh. So anyway, we uh, there in Norman, he's in Oklahoma City. So we were able to get together frequently mm -hmm. to the point where COVID's different. So it's hard to talk about what we do this year as opposed yeah. to what we normally <laughs> do. But what happens in a family like ours, and I'm sure many families, mm -hmm. is we say, oh, I'll see you next weekend. Well, I just saw you. Well, I'll see you. And, you know, and then it goes, <laughs> it goes Easter to Christmas and you haven't seen each other. Not mm -hmm. really. But yeah. it's because you can see each other, but you don't. Exactly. You're too, you're too close to be. But and also with our lives and with electronics and everything else, mm -hmm. you know, we stay in touch. Sure. We're just not physically together. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so Christmas with COVID, we had a two hour Christmas, family Christmas, no mm -hmm. food, no celebration, masks outside because that turned out to be a very pretty Sunday, yeah. the Sunday after Christmas. And uh, so we got together just to be together. But it was two hours. Burns and I drove to Oklahoma City. Nice. And drove back. There you go. Yeah. So are you? So do you like? I I know the president's house. Uh, this is a slightly off topic, but I know I think it's interesting because I think I know the answer to this. Okay. Um, the president's house is no longer there. Like they're building a new one, right? Correct. Where do you guys live in Stillwater? <laughs> <laughs> we live a nine iron away. I uh -huh. mean, you can see the house being built from the house we live in. Yeah. So we live in a. A smaller neighborhood mm -hmm. just north of that property. Okay. And what's interesting is we hear all the rattle and the bang and the beep, mm -hmm. beep, and get the water shut off. Yeah. And get electricity shut off when they do that. At the, mm -hmm. And so we look at our neighbors and we go, who are those people <laughs> building that house? <laughs> so we're part of the neighborhood going through the inconvenience mm -hmm. of having that house built. Yeah. Which is interesting. It's just so weird. Like all the things that this year that has, um, changed changed and limited you know because uh -huh. it's like you know you, you guys one of the things i know you guys love to do is go out and, and just just walk around or go in the cart very and just much. see students um, very much and the house like come on you're about uh, one more year of uh <laughs> you'll get that new house but it won't it's it, the new presidents in a way that was planned okay yeah which which is a, a gift to the university right so it's going to be called the university house mm -hmm. which pleases us that we won't, although we had a hand in designing it, we won't live in it. Mm -hmm. So it will never be our house. Yeah. Does that make sense? That makes total sense. That goes to OSU as a university. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we planned it. Exactly. Yeah. And it seems like Anne and Burns were the gift to the university. <laughs> well, thank you. It was our gift to be here. That's right. Believe me. Mm -hmm. So Anne, I ask you this. Do you have any final messages to OSU students, any faculty, any staff that you may know and have gotten to know over the years? Oh, that's a wonderful question. Just to know how much this experience has meant to us mm -hmm. and the whole thing centers around students and student success. That's the bottom line to everything. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate everybody and everything that is making students better and helping them become all they can be. And so the thank you goes to the faculty, goes to the staff, goes to the support system of everybody who's on this campus. And it's the most, the loveliest people I think I've ever known. I could not have said it any better myself, and that's why we're glad that you said it. Ann Hargis, thank you. joining us here on Ocali Unreported. Thank you once again for doing this. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. And My pleasure. Th and, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to the Ann Hargis special right here on, on Ocali Unreported. Have a great day. OMG. <laughs>